Are you, all, are you all ready for the word of God? Yes. Praise God. Open up your Bibles. Yes. Go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the two kingdoms. There's two kingdoms that, that are available for you to live in. Even if you were in a different country, I'm amazed when I went overseas how people would honor me just because I was from the United States of America. I, went, I remember being in uh, South Africa, and as they introduced me, they would introduce me as this is Kevin Ortiz, pastor from the United States of America. And then they would come to me with state questions. They would ask me, what do you think the United States will do in this situation and in this season? And I became the voice of the United States of America in front of everybody. It, it, it didn't matter if I was, I even, not only did, did they, rec they, they recognize that I was from the United States of America, the Lord had opened up doors where I went into the villages where I was honored in front of a king. And as I sat next to the king, the king began to ask me what the United States of America would do in different situations. And I was the voice in that room. Amen. Because they saw me, even though I was in South, Eric, South Africa, I wasn't from South Africa. So they treated me differently. And every one of us, if you are a child of God, the Bible says that you might be in this world, but you are not from this world. The Bible says that we walk in the flesh, but we live by the spirit. And we have to choose which way of living we're going to live. Are we going to live according to the kingdom of this world or the kingdom of our God? We have to choose what governs our life, what rules we are going to honor, how we are going to direct our family and walk out our future, whether we're going to walk according to the ways of this world and the kingdom of this world or are we going to walk according to the ways of God and the kingdom of God amen now in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 it says I call heaven and earth as witness today against you here God is speaking to us that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. So here, God Almighty is setting before us a decision. Which road are you going to take? How are you going to, to walk in this world? Are you going to follow him? Or are you going to follow the cares of this world? Are you going to choose life? Or are you going to choose curse and death? We have a choice to make which way we will live. Every one of us have to make this decision. But if we were to choose what, whichever way we decide to choose, that not only is the way that we are going to live, but our children are going to live that way as well. If we choose to live according to the way of this world, and according to death, that's the way your family is going to live. That's the way your marriage is going to live. That's the way your business is going to be. That's the way your heart is going to be. That's the way your kids are going to be. But if you choose to live according to the ways of God, God will help them and their, their walk that they will begin to live for him as well. So you choose, tell your neighbor, you choose. And you got to make this decision and you got to make it solid and plain because God is not one to deal with people that are wishy-washy on their faith. The Bible says that if you are like, if you are, are not solid in your faith, it's like a, a boat without a sail. That you could be just 
tossed to and fro whichever way. And you see it all the time in the church where people who never allow God to do a work in them where they've completely sold out to the ways of God and said this is the only way I'm going to live is according to the word of God. But they walk according, you know, one, one foot on the, on the word of God but then on one, one foot on sand. It's like they're hedging their bets. If, if God doesn't do it, maybe some man will do it. These are people that when they walk, they walk, they say, oh, I love God. And they, they're here at church praising God. But when they walk out of here, the temptations of the world, of the world cause them to, to lose their peace and lay down their values. They take up the things of this world. These are the people, instead of going to God and trusting God and believing God, that God is their provider, that God will take care of them, that God will meet their needs. They're the ones that run to the pawn shop and to the payday cash loan place, and they're always going to some uncle, some aunt, and they're always asking for a handout instead of going to God and saying, Lord, change my way so that I can receive your blessing. Hallelujah. And every time you come worshiping God and thanking God, but then you go begging to some man, how do you think the name of Jesus Christ is being represented before that person? How do you think that man, that man looks, looks at you and thinks, even though you might say one thing on Sunday, but you come to me, I'm your God. And that person never sees God glorified through your life because you never draw on a line in the sand and say, you know, Lord, Though I be slayed, yet I will trust you. I'm trusting you. Your word says the righteous are never forsaken, nor will the children beg for bread. Matter of fact, I've learned that the, the more I get, the more I choose to allow credit cards, banks, and debts to take care of my needs, I will never see the blessing of the Lord. If it's always about, because that's the way of the world. The way of the world is sign over your future so that you can have something for today that most likely you really don't need. Amen? There was a man in the word of God. The Bible calls him the rich young ruler. Everybody say rich, rich. Young, young ruler. Now, this rich young ruler, he came to Jesus. He thought he had his life in order. He went to Jesus and said, how can I receive the kingdom of God? And Jesus began to say, honor your father, do the commands. And the, and the, the young man said, I've done all those things. And Jesus said, one thing you lack, I would love it if there was only one thing wrong with me. How many of you guys would think, think that's pretty good? One, only one thing wrong with me, praise God. <laughs> But Jesus found him and said, only one thing you lack. He said, sell everything you got. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. The Bible says that this man walked away from Jesus sad because he had much wealth. Let me tell you, he didn't have much wealth. Much wealth had him. And Jesus was given an opportunity to enter into the kingdom of God where he gets to live by faith and see the glory of the Lord everywhere he goes. But this man would not surrender what he had in his hand to receive what Jesus had in his. When we live according to the ways of Jesus and walking in the kingdom of God, there cannot be a negotiation about what God can receive from you. I've made a point in my life, it all belongs to the Lord. And the Lord allows me to enjoy it while it's in my hands, amen? But there are times I'll be walking down the street and the Lord will say, take off your shoes and bless this man and next thing you know, you're gonna see Kevin walking barefoot down the street. Because I own nothing, it all belongs to the Lord, amen? But I've learned something, that when I give it to God, God gives me everything. God provides for me. God takes care of me. God blesses my life. Amen. I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So that's part of living in the kingdom where we're not being tempted by the things of the flesh, but we're being led by the spirit of God. Amen. Now, Jesus, he's the one that's teaching us how to live in the kingdom. If you can, go to Luke chapter 6. 
Now the kingdom of God will supply for you. It will provide for you. It will not leave you helpless, weak, not enough, broke. No, the kingdom of God will supply for you as long, listen to this, as long as you choose to live by the kingdom. If you come to me and say, Pastor, I want to believe. I'm trusting God. I'm living in the kingdom. But I have all these, these needs. And I know I'm supposed to have more than enough, but I don't have enough. And then I ask you, well, where, what's happening with your finances? And you show me a thousand different debts from credit card and expenses and car loans and, 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 and jet ski loans. And even the fishing rod has a loan. I'm going to tell you, it's not that God hasn't blessed you. It's because the devil has stolen from you. You surrendered yourself to slavery. Tell your neighbor, debt is slavery. Oh, come on now. Now some people, oh, Pastor, I don't want to hear this. I want to do that. <laughs> Pastor, can you just pray and a million dollars show up in my house? It doesn't work that way. God requires you to be faithful what he blesses you with. What I've noticed, what I know about the Lord is when you get serious with God, God will give you an anointing to destroy that debt. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to share more on this aspect. I have, I have a, um, I want to say this out loud and declare it because I want to do something that in the natural, it looks impossible how many of y'all want to see a miracle in this church? I am going, this is what I am, I am committing my faith to. I'm setting this out there. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know how the Lord is going to do it, but I'm declaring it because I'm believing that the spirit of God will come upon me to give me wisdom and knowledge and direction on how to get there. Amen. This is where we're going. Y'all want to know where we're going? This is where we're going. I believe and I have faith that we are going to have a debt-free church. Now, listen to me. I am talking about you. That you are going to be out of debt the entire congregation. That you're going to owe no man nothing. Accept, uh, accept the debt of love. I'm asking for Holy Spirit wisdom. We're not, we're going to do this together. Amen. I don't, I can't share too much more about that, but this is something, even on July 4th, I was at the altar lifting up the needs of the people, praying that God will cancel your debts that the Lord will lead you out of, of, of every type of debt in Jesus' name, where you owe no man nothing except the debt of love. Someone's saying, well, pastor, that's impossible. I serve an impossible God. Amen. Well, pastor, I can't believe it. You don't have to believe it. I'm believing it. Amen. You just get to choose if you're going to walk with us or not. Well, pastor, I don't know if that can happen. Just walk. Keep coming. Keep hearing the word of God. We'll make a believer out of you. Amen? It's, you know, eating dinner is so much better when it's debt-free. Wearing clothes are so much better when it's debt-free. The new clothes might be nice for a day or two, but after that day or two, you're thinking, man, why did I get this? Why did I get these crazy cowboy boots? And it's hot and nobody wears boots around here. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus shows us how to live in the kingdom of God. There's one word when it comes to a Christian, a believer, what they must do to enter into the kingdom of God that will take them there and that they will see the glory of the Lord everywhere they go. 
And that one word is give. And I'll explain why giving takes you in. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, give and it will be given to you. In other words, God is saying you do one action and there's going to be an anointing that's going to come upon your life that's going to cause people to give to you. Give and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So if the only time you give to anyone is when they give a hard luck, sad story, always crying in front of you, and then finally you get those two, two dimes out of your pocket to bless them, say, it's not what you asked for, but it's just all I'm going to give you. That's the way you're going to receive. There's a big difference. But when you walk with God... You recognize that you are a giver. Amen. Giving is not something you do. Giving is who you are. Amen. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his greatest treasure, his son, Amen. that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God is a giver. Tell your neighbor, my father is a giver. And the way that you measure your giving is the way that you're going to receive. If you give to honor the Lord, the Lord is going to cause it coming back, you, uh, coming back to you, honor, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If you give to be a blessing to others, God's going to cause others to be a blessing to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. The same way you measure is the same way you're going to receive. If you only give when you have more than enough, you're only going to receive when you have more than enough. But when things look low, there's nothing there. Amen. The same measure. And the reason why God calls us to this giving is because giving pulls you out of the world. Amen. A person who lives according to the things of the world, giving is losing. Think about this. You go to work and in your job, a little rumor pops up that in your area, someone is going to be promoted. And immediately, everyone in the workplace tries to make everybody else look bad. And they look better. They start spreading rumors. Oh, that girl Yolanda, I'm telling you. She talks bad about you behind your back. She don't like being here. Oh, I heard her husband's going off to war and they're going to be moved to a different part of the country. Trying to get them to think that that person's not going to be there that long. Giving breaks that. Giving is not about trying to take somebody's blessing. Giving is trying to be a blessing to someone else. And the world works this way where, you know, if I'm going to grow, I have to push someone back down. We call it the crab in the, in, the, in the bucket, where as soon as one crab gets to the top, the other crabs grab them and pull them back down. And sometimes it seems like our whole life is lived that way. That's not the blessing of the Lord. That's not the way that God wants you to live. You should be thankful and be happy when others are being promoted, but a lot of times you think, well, why not me? And you think that, that somehow God has forgotten you and then next time you work real hard on making the other person look even worse. That doesn't sound like a blessing to me, amen? The Bible says that God will make you the head and not the tail. The word of God says that promotion doesn't come from the east or to the west. It comes from the Lord. Amen? amen? And when you walk with God, you just, you're faithful to the Lord. You serve others in the love of God. And God will begin to, to bring you into a place of blessing. He takes you in. Why? Because you're walking in the kingdom of God. Tell your neighbor, I'm walking in the kingdom of God. And when you're walking in the kingdom of God, God's the one that promotes you. He's the one that lifts you up. I remember this one man, he was telling me that he, 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 he met this, this, this owner of a business. And the owner of the business, uh, when he heard uh, that my friend was a Christian, he says, oh, I don't hire Christians in my business. My friend asked him, he said, why don't you hire Christians? 
He goes, because they're not afraid of getting fired. They tell me when I'm threatening them to fire them, they said, praise the Lord, God has something better for me. Amen. See, when we walk with God, we know that our Lord is the one that's going to take care of us and that we are following him. We are soldiers of Christ. And as good soldiers, the Lord takes care of us. He supplies us for us so that we could do what God has called us to do. I'm not living for myself. I'm crucified with Christ, yet I live. Not I, but Christ who lives in me. The only goal that I have in my life is to bring the kingdom of God to others. I am a representative of this great and mighty kingdom. The kingdom of almighty God. So if I'm here in Harlingen, Texas, and someone gets in my presence, I come to bring them the, the, the glory and the majesty of the kingdom. Like today is Healing Sunday. Those who are sick are going to get healed because I come with the anointing and the glory of the kingdom of God. For those that are hurting, for those that are looking for direction, for those that are looking, that have needs, they didn't come to receive from the hand of a man. They came to receive from the glory of Almighty God. We live in the kingdom. And it's a whole different way of thinking than the way of this world. And we have to choose if we're going to walk according to the ways of this world or the ways of our God. Amen. If we follow God, the word of God says we'll always be on top and never on the bottom. Tell your neighbor, I'm always on top. And you say, oh, Pastor, but I'm from San Benito, Texas. I graduated 452 in my class. I grew up eating rice and beans. My dad was poor. My granddad was poor. I got 4.6 kids now. And I'm poor. It's time for you to come out of the kingdom of this world and step into the kingdom of God. How do I do that? That's when you give your heart to Jesus Christ and you declare that he's your Lord and your Savior, that Jesus is the king over your life. And when Jesus becomes a king over your life, the glory of the Lord will be released upon you. He gives you the Holy Spirit who begins to teach you new things on how to live. Now the, the life that you live is not your own. The length of your days, thank God for the length of your days, but the length of your days is not just so that you can go retire. The length of your days is so that you can serve the Lord every day of your life. Amen. You find someone serving the Lord, you're going to find joy and peace because those are the gifts that God blesses us with. But you find someone living for themselves, you're going to find heartache, pain, sickness, depression, they think, oh, I got all this money because I work out this deal. Yes, but you hurt so many people just to get there. And you can't sleep because every time you sleep, you see the destruction that you did just to get where you're at. But when you serve the Lord, watch how God promotes you. Watch how God takes you. And when you get there, it, the Bible says that the blessings come without, without any uh, sorrow. I don't know about you. I want that where I don't feel like I took from someone to just to get my own, but it's because God blessed me. Amen. I want to give you the three, three things about as a giver, three great blessings that happen when you're a giver. Amen. If you took, if you brought a pencil and a paper, you're going to be even greater blessed because you're going to remember. Amen. Three blessings of giving. The first one is giving trains me to walk in the kingdom of God, not in the power of my hand. That's what giving does. Giving trains me. It's training me. When I give to the Lord, he's training me. When I honor God with my tithes and offerings, it's training me. It is difficult when you're living according to the ways of this world to take 10% of your income and give it to a God that you do not see. 
instead of paying for a bill that you do. There have been times where it looked like there was not enough for nothing. We didn't, have any, didn't even have any food in the house. And all we had was a tithe. I'd rather grow, go hungry and die of starvation than to fail to honor my God with my tithe. I know you say that's a radical way of thinking, Pastor Kevin. God will understand. He will forgive. Yes, but I believe that God's word is true. And unless I step out in faith and trust God's word, how am I ever going to see the blessing of the Lord? It's very easy to give when you got a lot, but when you don't have a lot, that's when you need to see God's blessing. You cannot afford not to give. So when I give my tithe and my offering, it's the Lord training me to live by faith and not by sight. I'd rather be trained in the area of my giving and my finances then they have to be trained because of sickness and disease at the point of death where if God didn't perform a miracle this body stops living thank God he's faithful he's faithful to heal those that were sentenced to death amen my brother right here stage what five cancer four cancer doctors giving up on him the Lord healed them of cancer. Last month, I talked about Brother Benny here. He was dead. Doctors already pulled the sheet over him. They had given up. But the Lord stirred my father to go and visit him. And my father laid hands on him, and he came back alive. And look at him, 30 years later, still serving the Lord. If it wasn't real, listen to this, if the kingdom was not real, Benny would be dead and he would not be sitting there with his wife serving the Lord all these years later. That's why I laugh when, when, when I get these little, these little atheist guys rousing up saying, show me proof that God's alive. There's Benny. Show me proof. I, I feel sad for them. Because they, you know, Jesus even said, you know, the only thing you're going to get is like Jonah. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. So giving, it's training me. Tell your neighbor, I'm being trained. It's God training me to trust him and not the power of my flesh. Thank God you have skills and talents and abilities. Thank God for all those things. But it's the Lord, the one that really blesses you. Amen. You say, oh, no, pastor, I went to educate. I had, I have a good education to do this. I did a lot of sacrifice. I worked real hard. Thank God for all those things. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But who's the one that keeps your heart beating? Amen. <laughs> You can have all the things this world says that, that to rise you up to the top, but if you don't have that heart beating, can you make your heart beat? Everybody, I want you just to stop and begin to think about you beating your own heart. I'm going to make my heart beat. <laughs> That's the Lord, amen? Praise God, amen. The second blessing of giving is giving promotes love and destroys fear. Giving promotes love and destroys fear. Every time I'm faced with a challenge in my life, I don't look at the need and get so overwhelmed by it where it causes me to fear. I go and I look for the, to the Lord and I ask the Lord to bless me with seed. The Bible says that he gives seed to the sower. If I have a need that I'm believing God to take me out, don't give me the harvest, give me the seed. Because in the seed, I can receive more than I can imagine. Amen? And when I have needs, but then the Lord begins to speak to me about sowing and giving, even though I have needs, which one am I going to listen to? Am I going to listen to the needs of my life or am I going to listen to the voice of the Lord? And so when I listen to the voice of the Lord and I give, 
I'm pushing that fear aside and saying, you, you know, Lord, even though it doesn't look like I have enough for tomorrow, but because you've given me something for today and you're telling me to give and to serve, I'm going to give and I'm going to serve. I'm not going to be worried about tomorrow because, Lord, you blessed me with today. So how can I, listen, if God is not with us, what hope do we have? What hope we have for tomorrow if God is not on our side? So when I serve God in my giving, when the Lord speaks to me about giving, I'm faithful. Every time I see that need, it looks like a big old mountain. It looks like, man, it's, there's no way around it. There's no way to get there. But then God has a way of speaking to you in your need about giving something that you didn't even know that you had. And I'm being challenged. Am I going to, to give what I have even though what I have is not enough for my need? And it looks like I have less now? That's what the world says. But God is challenging us. Release what you have in your hand so I can show you what I have in mine. Which one would you rather have? What you have in your hand or the one that the Lord has in his? And that's the choice that we make. So we must follow God in his ways. So when I give, I'm pushing away fear. Just go like that. Just push away fear. I'm pushing away fear. I'm pushing it away. I'm not going to be led by this world. I'm going to be led by the spirit of God. I'm not going to put faith in my job. I'm not going to put faith in my, in my pocketbook. I'm not going to put faith in a dollar, but I'm going to put faith in the provision of my God. And when I live that way, watch how God comes quickly to my, to my rescue. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's the blessing of God. Amen? I can sleep at night knowing that I'm in the hands of the Lord. Amen? And you know, the devil's really good at putting fear in your life. The devil's really good at saying, oh, something's not going to happen. You're not going to make it. Trying to cause us to be weak. Instead of being a blessing, we become a curse to others. And let me just say this. I'm going to charge you extra for this, this point. Don't talk destruction. Don't talk destruction. No one needs to know your problem except for God. Some people, they, they, they want to walk with God, but their, their fear is rising up, so they want to tell everybody about their issue as if they are God. I remember the story about two young boys. Comes Christmas time. They went upstairs, got ready for bed. The littlest one got on his knees. The older one got on his knees. The little one began to say prayers to God, asking God for Christmas gifts. The oldest one began to shout loud what he wanted. He went to shout, Jesus, I want a bike. I want new toys. The little one said, bro, quiet down. Jesus ain't deaf. The oldest one looked at his brother and said, yeah, but grandma is. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I'm trusting the Lord. If you want to come talk to me, come talk to me. If you have a need, let's pray together. Let's believe God together. You got, you got someone that will fight with you, the good fight of faith. But I'm not your God. And I can't take care of you. Amen. So giving pushes away fear. You might be where you're at today. But when you walk with the Lord, the Lord is going to take you somewhere great tomorrow. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the, the, the third great blessing. Praise God of giving this third great blessing is giving opens your ear to hear the direction of the Holy Spirit some people say I want to hear God clearly I need to hear God clear when you say God use me watch how God will begin to speak to you God will begin to speak to you in doing things that you never thought you would do, to give things you never get, you thought you'd give. Some people say, Lord, 
speak to me to show me where I'm going to receive. And that God doesn't work that way. God will speak to you on where to give. And as you give, it shall be given good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You know, some people say, well, why is God always asking me to give? Because God wants you to receive. You can only see what's in your hand, so you can only give what's in your hand. But you can't see what's in his. And he wants you just to believe that he has something prepared for you. I remember my, when my father was walking this out, he had quit his job because the Lord said, I want you to stop working for man and I want you to work for me. And every day he would wake up early, he would get dressed, and he would leave the house, and my, my mother would say, Carlos, where are you going? And my dad would say, I'm going to work. And my mother would say, you don't have a job. But my dad went to the bookstore and was reading all the Christian books, preparing himself for the life that God had for him. When the Lord finally opened up doors for him to preach, he went to go preach in a small little church in far Texas. He hadn't worked in several weeks. There was no money coming into the house, and Kevin loves to eat. Five children in a small little house on North Reagan Street. My dad went out so excited because the Lord finally was going to use them in the area that he was preparing himself to be used. He went in there and he preached his heart out to show people the love of God. At the end of the service, a pastor came to him and said, we have an offering for you. And he gave him that offering, and it was $9. My dad was so excited, his very first offering. He thought, I could buy some milk. I could buy some bread. And as he was driving home, he figured out, I probably have enough to buy some chicken, too. <laughs> and he was hungry, so he planned on going to the Church of the Chickens. And... <laughs> And as he was driving, the Lord began to speak to him and said, I want you to give this offering to your pastor. And as my father would share the testimony, he said, you know, inside of him, he began to say, Lord, rebuke the devil for speaking. Get thee behind me, Satan. He had $9. That's milk money. That's bread money. That's churches. But the Lord kept on speaking to him, and when he drove into that place, right by the window was his pastor. And the pastor saw my dad drive in, and the pastor grabbed the chicken wing and said, Carlos! My dad wanted to put it in reverse and leave that place as quickly as possible. <laughs> my dad got out of the car, but first he took the offering and put it underneath the seat so that he wouldn't be tempted. And he went into the, the restaurant and he ate his pastor's chicken. At the end of the, the meal, my father said, Pastor, wait here. He went into the car. He grabbed the offering. And he, couldn't, he gave it to this pastor. And he said, Pastor, the Lord told me to give this to you. The pastor looked at him and said, may the Lord keep on telling you to give in Jesus' name. <laughs> so now my father is thinking, my wife is going to beat me up. The only money that I've received in all these weeks, and I gave it away. See, that's what the devil will tell you. He'll tell you, you missed it. You messed up. You shouldn't have given. Don't you know you needed those few dollars? But when he walked into his house, he smelt food being cooked in the kitchen. He went into the kitchen, he looked at his wife, he said, Ada, where, where did all this food come from? My mother said, there was a lady at the grocery store. The Lord told her to buy us groceries and she bought us over $100 worth of groceries. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a God of the little, and he's a God of the much. 
when you think he doesn't know that you are there and you think he doesn't know your situation, I'm here to tell you that he does. The scripture says this. Let me read it to you. You should write, you should memorize this verse. It's in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. It says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Amen. God is faithful. God is good. He wants to bring you up to a living where when you walk down the street, they say, there's that great man, woman of God. Because the anointing of God is upon your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you all receive that today? Can we give God praise? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, as we take our tithes and offerings, I want you to believe God with me. I want you to have faith that God will provide. Some of you are facing difficult needs. It's time to sow a seed. Believe God that God will bring in the provision. Believe God that God will give you wisdom. Listen, you could get a great blessing of finances, or you can receive wisdom that comes from the Lord. I don't know about you, but if I receive blessings that come, wisdom that comes from the Lord, God will show me how to prosper all the time. Amen. So I encourage you guys to trust the Lord today. Give, believing God, that God is your provider, that you are walking and living in the kingdom of God, not according to the kingdom of this world. Amen. If you need an offering uh, envelope, there's one in the front of your chair. But I want you to prepare your tithes and offerings today, and we're going to pray and bless your offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Who needed to hear that word today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stand up on your feet. Hallelujah. Let's not consider this as something that's just normal. Let's consider this as holy. Whatever you give to the Lord, that represents your time, your effort, your skills, your abilities. It also represents your future. The reason why you received some finances is because there's a reward for some sort of sacrifice and labor and skill that you do. So it's not a common thing just to give. It's something that is attached to your heart but when you give to the Lord, the Bible says that wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. You're putting seeds in the ground that the kingdom of God will be spoken and declared around the world. That God will provide for your life and will release his wisdom and his anointing to prosper you and your family. You're sowing into the future. So as we pray and as we give, consider it as holy. Not something just common to do as if you were just tipping a person who served you. But consider it as precious seed sown into good ground that will produce a mighty harvest for your life. Hold that offering before you. Father, I thank you that your word is alive and sharp and powerful. That we are a people that don't choose to just receive a little and forget the rest. But we're a people that honor you and choose to walk according to your ways, according to the kingdom of God. You said, Father God, that we get to choose this day the blessings or curses, life or death. We choose blessings. We choose life. We choose your kingdom. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, to release that blessing upon your people. That they will see your mercy and your goodness. That they will be filled with testimonies 
of how you provide it, how you open up doors that no man can open, how you give wisdom when it looked like they were lost. Bless your people as we sow in faith today into your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and give as God leads you today.